back to San Diego People. I'm Lauren Finney. This morning we're discussing charitable giving as the year comes to a close. One organization based right here in San Diego is St. Madeline Sophie Center, which serves individuals with developmental disabilities. Joining me now to tell us more about it is Deborah Emerson, CEO of the center. Deborah, thanks so much for being here. Tell us a little bit for people who aren't too familiar with the Sophie Center. Um, what, what services you're exactly providing? Um, we serve people with developmental disabilities, autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, or intellectual disabilities. They come to us after high school. Most of them are about 22. Our oldest person is about 86. And depending on their disability, they go into our different programs. And then within our programs, we have some specialty. We're very creative there in liberal arts. We have an organic garden, a pool, swimming pool, and two galleries. And computer lab, we have a big kitchen, so we teach them skills so that they can find jobs or help their families at home or at a group home and just have a full life. And we're talking over 400 people at, at the facility, so that's a significant amount. It's like a village, I think. It is a village. <laughs> it's coming and going. People are coming and going all the time. We bus our students out into the community to have jobs and work on parks and daycare centers and litter abatement. And then we bus them out just to be part of the community. We partner and collaborate with a lot of nonprofits and also the cities. Our students just rang the bell for Salvation Army so oh, and bought fantastic. bikes for the Salvation Army. So they also raised money. So we're teaching how to give also. That's amazing. Yes, it is. While you're at the same time trying to, to fundraise yes. as, as a nonprofit. I know you're located in East County, which you mentioned the two galleries, and I mm -hmm. just think it's so fascinating that this, the, the students, the residents there, are bused to these galleries and they do different types of work, right. artwork that mm -hmm. they sell. Mm -hmm. They have glass. We work on glass, weaving, wood, um, screen printing, you name it, they can do it. And then those wares are sold and they get a paycheck from a portion of it. And a portion goes back into the art program. So they love getting that paycheck. I think they all got one today. So uh, they just <laughs> love having that money and be, you know, part of the community yeah. and doing something different. Yeah. And, and so how can, how do families find Sophie Center how does how does that work is there a qualification in order to to be able to be a resident there uh, it's not really a resident program or a day program some of our students live in residence okay. um, they come through qualifications through the San Diego Regional Center or word of mouth a lot of parents you know have a person with a disability they connect that way also so it's really giving them somewhere to go and having more of a daily high quality of life and mm -hmm. kind of learning how to have a job. And friends. And friends. And very and important. All very fr friendly. And uh, just having um, something to do with the rest of their life. They're very professional. People have you know, individual jobs in the grocery stores and other places. And some people say, hey, I'm an artist or I'm a singer or I'm a movie star because we do art and drama also. Yeah, and they just get very excited and they're great musicians and people just need to give them the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So the Sophie Center um, is is mostly reliant on state funding. 75% of your funding comes from the state, um, but you've seen a, a decrease mm -hmm. over the years. We haven't had a raise since too. Wow. So um, it put much more pressure on us to fundraise, especially we want unique quality programs so those take extra money to have an art program or an organic garden. So we rely on grants, fundraising, uh, special events. We have a tea coming up in January at the Marine Room and that's for our aquaponics. We even have grapevines and our teach our students skills and we work in public gardens so it's farm to table and we just got a grant from I think it was Tory Pines Kiwanis for our weaving program. You know, it's 1500 but that makes that piece go. Right. So it doesn't matter how small, it really does make a difference. And what about private donations? Is, is the rest of that 25% made up with... Um um, some of it does. Right now we're doing our annual appeal and it's for solar. So that would really impact us, you know, having solar on the campus and that would take an expense that would be very helpful to, for our bottom line. So we're trying to raise over $100,000 right now uh, for our annual appeal. But uh, donations are crucial um, just in the maintaining the facility itself. You know, there's a lot of 
repairs around it and just to keep it improved so it works for the people with disabilities. Is there an opportunity for volunteers as well? I know with some of the classes perhaps mm -hmm. um, volunteers can they come in? We have in a lot of artists teach? that come in and teach different yes. things um, like fusion glass. We're doing a lot of fusion glass and then we have um, also printmaking so we're always open for an artist to come in and teach. And other areas too, we have a full kitchen. Um, during lunch we always need help just to help you know get trays to people, help them get their lunch and things like that and transportation. We just we do need volunteers and it's very helpful. It gives our staff a break at some level so that's really helpful. And donations in forms of, of cars and, and other gifts mm -hmm. that can be beneficial to a daycare mm -hmm. facility. Yeah. It's all important, um, volunteering for us to volunteer, I believe, in giving back. So I think giving back and keeping it go going, it's a full cycle for us. And we depend on our community to support us yeah. in many different ways. How, in what ways are you working to get the, the community, have them be aware of, of what the Sophie Center is doing, what it provides in order to get the word out? Um, we're very involved with the city of El Cajon and some of their events. Uh, also, we have art shows in other areas just to show what people with disabilities can do. I think it's very important for this group of people to be recognized in our community. So, um, you know, El Cajon has car shows. Our students go down there for the car shows and uh, we just did Haunt Fest. Over 40,000 people came to El Cajon. Our students were there. Our, my staff were there helping. So I just believe in giving back and it does make a difference in so many people's lives. So um, for me, I think being involved in your community is very important. I'm a Rotarian. I you know, do leadership. I mean, all those things help my program. Then people are curious, what are you doing? So then they come out for a tour and see. Once you get there, you'll see all the smiling faces. Oh, I can imagine. And it changes yeah. how you look at things. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it, Deborah, and great work at the Sophie Center. Thank you. Certainly a great example of an organization that we can be giving back to this time of year, especially. Yeah, yeah it's our 50th anniversary. Fantastic. Fantastic. 50 yeah. years. That's a good one. Yes, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for this morning's edition of San Diego People. Join us tonight for the KUSI News at 6, 10, and 11. We'll see you then.